What's going on? Dylan Tooby, Progressive Soccer. This video is a full length soccer practice that I did with three young boys. I believe they're 12 or 13 years old, tier one players in Calgary. We did it in this tight space. This is actually, this is actually a new business that I'm doing called Home Sports Turf, where we are installing high quality sports specific turf in people's homes so they can turn their garage or their basement, empty room, any area that they want into their own training facility. So we did the session in this tight little space. This was actually in one of these players' garage. Three players, four including myself, lots of little touches. But basically, while we're watching this video, I just wanna give you some ideas, some tips for training individually, but also if you're a coach, just sharing some of my philosophies. I'm just really freestyling this. As I watch, I'll give you some ideas that come to my head. Here we started the session with just some light touches. This is a warm up here and I'm just playing one touch, tight box or tight circle. It's just encouraging players to get on their toes, get off the heels, stay light on the toes. And as the confidence and the repetitions come, I want to pick up the pace, move that ball quicker and quicker, keep it on the ground, zip it faster and faster, challenge their touch, put a little more pace on the passes. But so important that we're staying on the feet, on the toes, not flat footed. Then throughout, I'll switch back from touches to dynamic exercise. I just think with the younger players, it's better to go back and forth from technique to dynamics and mobility stuff. If you're just doing 10 minutes of straight dynamic or mobility, a lot of them lose focus. So I find that way that keeps them engaged and they get more out of the warm up exercises. Once uh, we did a couple exercises, just going back to the ball, hitting it one touch and trying to pick up the pace. Now I'm trying to challenge their touch. Encourage them to stay light on the toes, as I said before. So important, get off the heels. I want you as a player, start catching yourself whenever you're on your heels, you're not on your toes. You're lunging for passes rather than quickly moving to get there because you're sharp with your footwork. Some more mobility exercises, so important. And when you're doing mobility exercises, don't do them just to do them. Do them with the purpose of increasing your mobility. Do them with the purpose of increasing your flexibility, of prolonging your career. So many players just waste warm up. I want you to take it seriously. So we moved forward and we went into um, a game I call ass. Well, that's what it's called. Excuse my language, but that's what we call it. And basically, if you screw up, you get a letter. So here, Bilal screwed up, he, he got a letter A. So when you get three errors in a row, you're the loser. And this game is called ass, we get to kick it at your ass. Excuse my language for the little kids, but that's the truth of what the game is called. So he's up against the wall, we all get one shot against him. But if you miss, if you miss the target, you're in the net. So don't blast as hard as you can, make sure you got a little bit of accuracy, but a little fun for these guys to warm up with. And after this, we started to get into the session. So again, the way that game would be played is just like we're doing that warm up is one touch, but I can pass the ball to you with pace. It just has to be on the ground. If it hits your foot, it's playable. So you just try to go one touch, one touch. And if someone screws up either by a misplaced pass, two touches, um, hitting the ball in the air, they get a letter. And as I said, at the end of it, if you got three screw ups, you're against the wall, getting the ball kicked up at you. So I'm taking off my gear, picking up the pace a bit. For me, I always like to join in on the sessions with the kids. I might challenge them to do more work, but I'm always using it as an opportunity to get touches for myself. So just continuing the warm up a bit, we did some more exercises, but now playing one touch in this tight space and instead of stagnant, just standing in a box or a square, I want a little bit of movement and creativity, some variety on the touches. So passing and moving, different little flicks around the corner, playing right and left feet. Don't just go in a circle, try to find new space after you pass the ball. And playing little combinations, moving the ball quicker. Keep it on the ground, put more pace on the passes, move that ball quicker. Obviously you gotta, you have to learn the weight of passing over time, but in the beginning, I would rather you pass the ball too hard than too weak. Finishing up with a few more mobility exercises. So these were what you would call probably ballistic or dynamic stretching rather than static stretching. I might do some stretches that look like um, static stretches that you've seen, but when it's warm up, it's always dynamic. It's like a half second stretch, move to the other side, go back and forth. Just trying to warm up the mu muscles, but improve the mobility. As I said, take it seriously, get something out of it. And sadly, I'm more flexible than 14 year old boys. That should not be happening. When you're youngest, you should be most mobile, but I want you to try to progress your mobility, progress your flexibility for the rest of your career. It'll make you a way better player, way better athlete, longer career. 
So I'm gonna start with these guys a uh, little bit of individual ball work, some footwork drills, and I just want them getting lots of touches, especially in this tight little space. Just starting nice and simple, like you've seen a hundred times, those taps, left to right foot, just light on the toes, quick taps. Once you get the rhythm, add the speed. So with all these, I'll ask the boys, just start slow, get your rhythm. Once you have confidence, build up the speed. Then between each one, instead of just standing around resting, I want balls up right away. I want juggle to 20 or 30. Get your touches, move on. Next one is like a croquetta touch, like an Iniesta signature move. If people even know who that is right now, we're getting old. But it's a, like a big touch. So instead of those little tiny taps in between, I'm taking one big touch, lunging or skipping away from the defender's lunge. And I'm stopping the ball on the other side and then continuing. Again, do this drill, juggle a little bit, move forward to the next drill. I'm just rolling, I'm just rolling the ball with the toe but I really want to open up my body and actually look to the opposite side of the room. And I want to move with it. I don't want these little touches just in front of me. I actually want to think about realist, realistic match touches. So dragging the ball, turning the body, quickly moving the feet, moving to the other side, and always, always working with both feet. Please do this from a young age, but whatever spot you're at right now, if I tell you to pass the ball 100 times with your right, you do it 100 times with the left. Definitely same for footwork as well. Juggle in between. and. This is so seriously serious for me. If you drop the ball, I say every time you drop the ball when you're juggling, you gave it away to the other team. It's players just when they get tired, they lose their focus and they they easily juggle to 100 when they're not tired, but as soon as they're tired, the focus goes and they can't even juggle to 5. So it's so important when you're tired, I want you to focus on those simple things like keeping the ball. Moving to this next exercise was just a little bit of a, a toe drag and um like a pullback to a toe drag. So that first move, but we're just working on the same foot. Here, really work on, as always, you're thinking about the touches, but I want light on the toes. I want nice footwork. And I want you to open up the hips, twist the hips. Actually look from one side of the room to the other side of the room. Don't just keep the ball right in front of you. Think about manipulating the ball, changing direction. Obviously you gotta work with both feet. And for all these, these can apply to players of all ages. It doesn't have to be just young kids. Obviously, this is great for them, but realistically, most um, senior men's league players that I play with, they need to do these things as well because they don't have the basics down. And we think as we get older, we need to get away from the basics when really we just need to do the basics better and better. And once we have that strong foundation, then we can move into more complex drills. But I would encourage anyone to maybe add something like this, like a footwork routine to the beginning of your day. Uh, 10 minute warm up, like it'll take you five minutes, go through all those exercises, do it every single day, get nice and sharp, good skills, good touch in both feet. One more exercise, I'm doing a Cruyff turn with a little touch in between and really focusing on quick feet with those touches in between. So a lot of people do a Cruyff and it's more of actually like a chop, like a Ronaldo chop. For me, I really like to encourage players to curl the toe and kind of drag it, cradle it behind you rather than chopping on the spot. You're gonna get a better change of direction. And with all the changes of direction, yes, we're focused on the technique, where you're touching the ball, but I really want you to focus on what you're doing with your legs, bending the knees, getting closer to the ground. So all of these focus, yes, on those quick feet, but I also want you to focus on the body movement. If I can learn to control my body better, I'm gonna have better changes of direction. And it's so much more than just what you do with the ball. We're gonna move forward, we're gonna do some passing drills. These are drills that anyone could do. All you need is a ball and a wall. And these are great because you're getting tons of repetitions. If I'm doing a passing drill with my teammates, I might only touch the ball every so often. When I'm passing by myself, especially in the beginning of my career, this is where I need to be getting tons of repetitions, right foot, left foot. I'm just starting super basic, right foot, left foot, inside of the foot, really encouraging the boys to get light on your toes. Don't be flat footed and lazy. Light on your toes, body over the ball, open up that foot, make flush contact, flexing the foot, especially on your weaker side. Don't let it go limp, don't, don't let it go weak. And actually analyzing like how it feels to have good, clean contact on a pass and what happens or how it feels when you don't focus as much, especially on your weaker side and you let your foot go a little, a little limp or a little weak. You can notice that. And that's what I need you to do when you're practicing your analyzing technique. Don't just kick the ball and say, well, that was good or that was bad. Why? And what did it feel like? And how do I replicate that? Or how do I change that? Moving forward, I'm playing 
And I'm just telling the boys again, get off the heels, stay light on your toes. But moving into the ex next exercise, I'm gonna play with the outside of my foot. So passing with the inside, and then I'm gonna play with the outside of my foot. So especially when I'm using the outside, I really wanna flex. But again here, I'm just talking about getting body over the ball. Don't be standing up, leaning up straight, lazy, flat-footed. Play that ball with the inside of the foot. It's gonna come across you. I want you to hit it with the inside, or sorry, the outside of the other foot. This is really important that you flex down. You get your body over. You can't be leaning back. I want you to lean over the ball, step towards your target, and really flex, especially when it's with the outside of the foot. For me, outside of the foot is such a, a beautiful and beneficial skill to have. And for some reason, I don't know why, in North America, Especially as I was growing up, they would encourage kids like, hey, don't use the outside of your foot. Just if you're going to pass, pass with the inside of your foot. That's how you do it properly. European football culture, Latin America football culture, they definitely encourage that and incorporate it. And you can see in the style of play and the technical ability of the players. So I'm always asking my players to develop the skill of playing with the inside and outside of the foot. So really focus on your footwork. If you're flat footed and you're lazy with your movement, it's going to be difficult and you really got to move your feet. If the pass isn't where you want it to be on the outside of the foot, you got to move your feet so it gets there. So focus again on the footwork as well as the quality of the passes, flexing the foot nice and strong, always playing with both feet. And with all these drills, I'm just basically going about 30 seconds, but I'll, I'll vary it depending on how the boys are doing. If it's a basic drill and they do it very easily, I'm gonna let them go through that relatively quickly. If they're struggling with it and I can see that the technique needs practice, needs practice, I might break it down a few times, take a few breaks, make them do it again and again and again until I'm satisfied. So here we're gonna play two touch and you just play any two touch. I want variation, I want creativity with your touches, I want fast feet. So I really want you to focus on getting rid of any pause between first touch and your pass. It's touch pass, touch pass, touch pass. Not touch with a half second delay before you move your feet to get to the ball. How quickly can you receive and pass the ball without panicking? I'm not telling you to force or rush the play, but I'm telling you to challenge yourself to play quicker. Remove any hesitation, remove any downtime between first touch and pass. Again, variation, always playing with both feet. Don't do the same pattern again and again and again. Challenge yourself playing with the inside of the foot, passing with the outside of the foot different variety, playing quickly, challenging yourself. These drills are great, you can do them by yourself, they can challenge your fitness, and you can obviously play with variation. In the beginning, variation of distances. In the beginning, play super tight to the wall, over time you can stretch the pace. The last passing drill that I did was uh, half turn. So playing a pass against the wall, I'm trying to receive that ball on a turn. So I'm also, I'm thinking about turning my body before I actually touch the ball. Rather than touching the ball, then turning my body to go the opposite way. So I'm either trying to turn with my first touch or turn my body before the ball comes to me, quickly turn and play the other way. This is one that the boys need to work on a bit more as you can see by some of these demonstrations. And please, if you're, if you're in the comments and you're giving these kids a hard time, Stop commenting right now because you don't know where you're at and you don't know what their goals are. Everyone just worry about themselves. They're happy to be in this, this video, so they're benefiting all of us. But playing on the half turn, and if you're a real baller, you're gonna add a sh shoulder check before you play. Quick turn, focus on what you're doing with the body. I'm not receiving the ball and then turning the other way. I'm receiving the ball with my body turned the opposite way. Moving forward into some more um, partner drills, some team passing dribbling drills. First one was just a straight dribble. So usually you do this over a little more space, but we're doing this in a tight area, lots of quick touches. I'm just dribbling across, laying it off to my teammate. What I'm encouraging them to do is, again, be ready. Don't be flat footed, be ready on your toes. Front foot, not back foot. And I want that first touch. I want you to run with the first touch. Don't receive the ball, then pick your body up and then move forward. Run with that first touch into space. Quick little touches in between. Moved into another drill here. I'm just gonna put a little marker or a dummy in the middle of the area. And basically same thing. I still want that positive first touch, but now I just want a little bit of skill and creativity in the middle. Have some fun with it. Again, don't do the same skill over and over and over again. Don't always go to the same way. If you're predictable and you're right footed and I know all you do is cut to the right, you become easy to defend. You need the ability to go right and left. It's okay if you have like two signature moves, one to go right, one to go left, but you have to be able to go both ways. You have to be able to finish with both feet. So especially when you're doing these drills, 
be honest with yourself say hey am i just doing the same thing going the same way or am i practicing practice is the time to fail practice is the time to look stupid it's the time to try things to lose control of the ball you want to fail in practice so you don't fail in the games but if you're always doing what's easy what you've always done so no one else laughs at you or you don't make any mistakes in training then you're never going to challenge yourself and progress to the next level so try different things go different ways be creative with your skills and your touches and if you're doing this just encourage players to have fun obviously anytime there's an opportunity for players to dribble and to try some 1v1 skills they're usually having a blast and once again, so important, that first touch. As the ball comes to you, you got to run forward. Attack with that first touch. Don't control the ball. Stand up. Okay, now I'm going to go. It's too slow. I want you attacking with the first touch. So in game, you beat players with your first touch rather than using any skill at all. Moving forward, doing some passing drills. This is just a simple two-touch pass. Receive, pass, follow your pass. Run into, um, run into the back of the line on the other side. But again, simple skills, five yard pass, you'd be shocked at how many players screw up these basic passes. So when you're doing these drills, I really want you to focus on the quality. Even if there's no defenders, you never give the ball away. The next step is a little give and go progression. And we're just playing little one, two combinations from one side to the other. So the player in the middle is gonna play a one, two. He'll go to the other side, play a little one, two with that player, pass it off, he goes and repeats again. I would really like these passes to go back into the player rather than sideways or forward on a diagonal which are usually easy passes to get intercepted and if you play back into the player you can put more pace on the passes and it's just way better for speed of play and it's better for ball retention and ball possession with all these drills it's so important that we're doing the basics but the quality has to be there we think we can move on to like advanced drills when we can't even pass a ball over five yards so whenever we're doing the basics don't overlook it. Don't think you're too good for it. Take pride in every single pass, every single first touch. Never give the ball away. But obviously in training, if you're pushing yourself, sometimes you're going to give the ball away. It's about how you respond. So we just did a little bit of fun, some dribbling at the end. Honestly, I was just doing this uh, video session to get some clips because we're promoting this new product. You can only get this if you're in Calgary, Alberta at the moment, the home sports turf. But if you are, send me a message. We'll come and hook you up. I did a few, uh, few little other games with the boys, but these were all the clips that we took for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop a comment below. Hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed. Drop some comments. Anything else, Dylan Tubi, Progressive Soccer. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys, and I'll talk to you real soon.